Hello and welcome guys. In today's video, we'll be talking about uh, the different types of drag. Now, before going into what the different types of drag are, let's talk about what uh, the definition of drag means. So, drag is actually an uh, aerodynamic force uh, which is always parallel to the relative airflow and is always opposite to the direction of flight path. Now, if I show it in a diagram, suppose if this is the aircraft okay and we have air flowing through it okay so we always know that for the plane to uh, for the plane uh, for uh, for uh, for a plane there is always a lift a weight and thrust and drag so now we'll be focusing only on the drag part so drag is what i said in the definition is actually a aerodynamic force okay which is parallel to the relative airflow now the red which i marked in the red color this is the relative airflow okay which i mentioned as v infinity so it's aerodynamic force which is parallel to the relative airflow and is opposite to the direction of flight path so since we are moving uh, uh, the thrust is in the front uh, is in the forward direction the drag is always actually opposing the thrust so it is op op always opposite to the direction of flight path now uh, we cannot we can never avoid drag okay drag is always part of anything let it be a uh, airplane or let it be a helicopter or let it be a car anything always there is a drag so drag always can never be avoided but it can be reduced because of drag there is inefficiency we don't get the maximum power okay now uh, what the different types of drag are okay is now what we're going to discuss now drag can be classified into two types actually which is parasite drag which is parasite drag and induced drag okay parasite drag and induced drag now always remember parasite drag is always non-lifting which means that this drag is always when uh, happens when the plane is on the ground okay and not when during and, and not in the in the in the cruise phase or not in the takeoff phase so always parasite drag is always during when the plane is on the ground now induced drag can all again also be called as lift induced drag which means that this drag happens only when during the takeoff phase or when the flight is cruising at a cruising altitude so always this type of drag induced drag is always during the lift phase okay when the air when the aircraft is in the takeoff phase or when it's in the cruise phase so we can all uh, we can either call the induced dra induced drag as lift induced drag too now we'll be focusing on parasite drag okay so parasite drag um, can further be divided into two okay so it can further be divided into two okay i'll write in another page parasite drag it can further be divided into two which is a profile drag profile drag and um, indifference drag okay now what profile drag means okay uh, as the name suggests the profile because of the shape of the body there will be drag okay the profile drag can be further classified okay which is form drag okay which is form drag and skin friction drag we, we can actually guess the meaning we can actually guess the meaning uh, from the from the word itself so as i said before profile drag is always with the shape okay now it i said that uh, profile drag can be classified into two which is form drag and skin friction drag now what form drag means um, is that i'll explain with an example okay suppose we have air flowing 
okay and if i keep now if i keep a wood here okay now obviously there will be more uh, drag here okay okay suppose here there is 100 percentage drag the drag here is 100 percentage sorry okay we have air flowing we have say a uh, uh, wood here or anything okay in a rectangular piece and here obviously there will be more drag okay 100 percentage drag okay now if i keep a ball here and if i allow air to move through it so how does the air move it move like this it will have even more a uh, smoother path than when compared to the first so we can say here the form drag here is 50 percentage only okay now now this is also a reason why the airfoil uh, the, the 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 wing shape is actually in this manner which is like this like an airfoil so what happens here we have smoother air we have smoother air flowing okay so here the drag will be maybe say 15 percentage or 10 percentage 10 to 15 percentage drag only so these are uh, the different types of form drag okay so with the help of form drag we can actually reduce uh, with the help of this airfoil we can actually reduce the uh, the parasite drag okay so if, if we can reduce the drag there will be better efficiency for the aircraft okay now as i said before the profile drag is classified into two which is form drag which i explain now and now uh, the next word is uh, what i'm going to explain is a skin friction drag skin friction drag means uh, since we have an airfoil here okay so this is airfoil so when the air flows on top of the airfoil there will always be a contact with the airfoil okay we have always the air always gets in touch with the airflow where with the air uh, with the airfoil so there is skin friction so always there is a friction between the friction happens when uh, when one uh, when when one object is on the other object okay so that is when friction happens and when friction happens there is always a inefficiency okay so this is the skin friction drag so um, there is no way we can avoid the skin friction drag okay okay are you clear with it okay okay so this is all uh, this is about the skin friction drag okay now if i talk about uh, now there are there are actually uh, different ways where we can uh, reduce the uh, uh, reduce the profile uh, reduce a parasitic drag uh, the two of the things i explain now is by using an airfoil and um, uh, and by using uh, by by smoothening the surface also we can reduce the parasitic drag okay by with we, we, if we if we have a smooth surface okay if we have a smooth surface the air will flow smoothly on it okay so if we have some kind of uh, same uh, if we have some eyes or formed on the on top of the airfoil there will actually be more drag formed okay are you clear with it so uh, one thing to note that if we increase the surface area of the wing suppose if we have uh, increase the surface area of wing the, the drag will also increase okay and uh, if we increase the surface area means what like if we introduce a flap or slat okay because only if we have if we can increase the uh, increase the flap we can have a better takeoff we can we can reduce the we can encourage more air to stick to the surface okay so if we have a more area to the wing okay um, the better the takeoff will be 
okay so we cannot avoid the flap so if we increase the surface area there will be more drag okay and okay so the the an important uh, figure to note is that okay if i draw a curve for the parasitic drag suppose if this is the drag d and this is the velocity v so as the velocity increase the drag also keep on increasing okay so this is how parasitic drag uh, the curve for the parasitic drag is now we're talking about the lift induced drag uh, for every aircraft there will be lift induced drag okay now what exactly is lift induced drag if i consider this to be an airfoil okay we have lift here we have weight acting downwards we have thrust and we have drag okay now uh, if the airplane is uh, is having a suitable angle of attack now the lift actually changes now the lift is here okay see this is lift li uh, this is the lift effective i call it the lift effective and this is the normal lift here this is the lift when there is no angle of attack so here is if i resolve this here this part is what i call as the induced drag okay this is what i call the lift induced drag okay now why does this happen okay why does this happen now this is what we are going to discuss now okay i'll erase this taking an airfoil okay i said that uh, there is always uh, according to bernoulli theorem um, there is th there will be always be high pressure downwards and then low pressure up okay so air will always have a tendency to move from the high pressure area to the low pressure area okay so uh, when these uh, when this happens um, along the air along the span wise flow as well as the code wise flow what happens is that there will be a change in the airflow okay so what happens in the end is that uh, if i draw from the uh, if i draw uh, um, a back view of the aircraft this is how it looks like suppose if this is a wing okay air will always have a tendency to move from the high pressure to the low pressure okay and if the air flows both along uh, when the air flows along the span wise flow as well as the code wise flow what happens is that the air flow gets disturbed okay and the air the disturbed air flow moves pushes the air downward and this downward flow is uh, actually what we call the downwash okay and only and uh, when there is uh, uh, when there is span wise flow as well as uh, code wise flow there will be something called the there will be a vortex formed okay and this vortex can never be eliminated and this is wing tip vortices okay so this cannot be eliminated okay when there is wing tip vortices there is uh, due to uh, it is only because when there is always a lift there is a drag okay and that drag is what we call the lift induced drag okay now if i draw a curve for it this is how the curve looks like drag versus the velocity uh, induced drag always is higher when the air speed is low okay and when the air speed keeps on increasing the induced drag reduces okay and this is a uh, um, for this is the graph for the induced drag and uh, in the in the beginning I, I i talked about parasite drag now um, the total drag is actually the addition of the total drag is actually the addition of the parasite drag plus the induced drag 
okay now if i combine the two graphs together what we finally get okay drag versus velocity okay uh, in the beginning i told that the parasite drags graph is like this okay so when the velocity keeps on increasing the parasite drag also increases now for the induced drag the vice versa happens that is when the velocity is small the drag is high and this is the graph for induced drag this is the graph for parasite drag now the total drag somewhere comes here okay so the pilots are this is the total drag so pilots are advised to uh, to fly always at the minimum drag at this place okay at this place we have the l by d maximum okay so we have the l by d maximum okay so pilots are always uh, required to fly at this place okay at this place at this place okay so this is all about the drag part i hope all have got a firmly good idea on the different types of drag so if you found this video informative do like share and subscribe thank you